state. Four cases are in Shelby, three in Tuscaloosa and Lee counties, two in Montgomery and Elmore counties. Baldwin, Limestone, Madison and St. Clair County have one case each. Our coverage continues on the ongoing coronavirus outbreak. Today, health officials implemented new health guidelines to keep the spread of the virus down. The state health officer is urging people to continue social distancing, with one notable exception. Like oftentimes, uh, at different times of the year, we do have a, a shortage of, of donated blood, uh, and that's particularly an issue when people are not out and about as much. So while we recognize that all these social distancing techniques are extremely important and need to be implemented, I, I would say that blood donation would be an acceptable reason to, uh, to be out and do that. Governor Kay IV issued a statement earlier on the updated precautionary guidelines. The governor said in part, these measures taken by the Alabama Department of Public Health are out of an abundance of caution in order to contain the area where the most cases of COVID-19 are present. The governor is also encouraging citizens to practice social distancing. The city of Birmingham is under a state of emergency, but city leaders are still conducting business. Now they are working on a plan to help small businesses try to figure out how they'll survive. WVTM 13's John Packey joins us now from City Hall with more. And John, how crucial is this plan that they're working on? Well, Sherry, consider this. Mayor Randall Woodfin said the average small business can only survive for 14 days with zero cash flow. That means if this outbreak continues too long, hundreds of Birmingham businesses could close. That's why the mayor wants to create an emergency fund for small businesses. And earlier this morning before City Council, the Economic Development Director Josh Chapman told the City Council there are several Birmingham businesses already suffering. In fact, they've identified 17 small businesses that have lost a combined $800,000 due to the virus outbreak. That's why they want to create a fund that could loan qualifying businesses ten dollars to $25,000 each as soon as possible. The city would put up $1.2 million and get private and corporate donors to help double it. We have 5,997 small businesses, so businesses under 50 employees. That affects 47,000 workers, many of whom are in the food and beverage industry and given the new public health orders have already lost their jobs. Now, as we speak, the city council is meeting inside city hall to consider this plan to create this emergency fund for small businesses. We'll let you know if it's approved tonight. Reporting live in Birmingham, John Papke, WVTM 13. There are three cases of coronavirus in Tuscaloosa County, and the mayor, along with city, official, city officials, that is, are working to keep those numbers down. The city is also working to help local businesses there suffering from the outbreak. The city of Tuscaloosa is working closely with the Chamber of Commerce to provide relief to businesses directly impacted by the Alabama Department of Public Health's guidelines. Our goal is to have a recommendation to the city council within the next 10 to 14 days. The city has also extended its policy on event cancellations. Permits for events will not be issued through April 30th. Nearly 300 events are now canceled in the city. And the city of Hoover working to make sure everyone there is getting updates impacting them when it comes to this virus. The city announced today a text alert system. Residents can sign up for text messages regarding the outbreak. All you have to do is text the words Hoover COVID to 888-777. The city has also created a page on its website for resources and announcements. Long lines today outside Church of the Highlands Grandview campus off of Highway 280. Now changes are being made. Assurance Scientific Laboratories started the testing of Vestavia Hills and Bessemer on Friday. Since then, the lab has processed more than 8,000 coronavirus tests. The lab is now partnering with Church of the Highlands and Christ Health Center to host one large drive through testing site. That site now closed and moved to a new location. Church of the Highlands grants Mill Campus at 4700 Highlands Way. Obviously, systems will have to be improved and changed as we move, but we are trying to do our very best to serve the community. People can begin lining up at 630. You do need a doctor's uh, a doctor to order this test for you. If you don't have an order from your own doctor, there will be physicians on site that can assess you. There are other places that you can get tested as well. In Tuscaloosa, DCH is screening people from 8 until 5 p.m. They are set up in the parking lot near the laundry facility. 
Urgent care for children is also testing a limited number of people under the age of 21. There are four locations for you to choose from. Birmingham, Trustful, Vestavia Hills and Tuscaloosa. Stop by from 2 until 10 on weekdays and 10 to 8 on weekends. More coronavirus testing in the state. Today, UAB announced its pathology labs will be able to start testing for COVID-19 by the end of this week. Testing for the virus, it has been limited in the state as more and more people are exposed to this virus, creating a strain on all health care workers. Doctors can also report data directly to the state health department. Um, we have a Genmark platform available and cartridges available to start testing in the UAB Diagnostic Virology Laboratory. But until the FDA issued guidance that was available this morning, we weren't able to utilize those tests. Updated visitation policies tonight from UAB effective immediately. Among those new restrictions, the hospital system now is limiting visitors to one per patient. Also, anyone under investigation or who tests positive for COVID-19 are not allowed in the building. Visitors may be screened for fever, cough or difficulty breathing. Food and flower delivery drivers will not be allowed inside hospital and clinic facilities. Deliveries must be picked up outside of the hospital. This new policy, it's to keep the spread of coronavirus down. Keep in mind, individual hospitals do have their own restrictions. YMCA of Greater Birmingham is temporarily closing its doors to the public and will reopen to provide emergency all day child care. As WVTM 13 Xavier Harris explains, it's to help first responders and health care workers. Today I spoke with the YMCA CEO Dan Powell and he says it's important to provide this kind of service to people citizens depend on each day. Right now YMCA's across Birmingham are closed and being cleaned from top to bottom. Powell says they will provide care for children of all health care workers at St. Vincent's, UAB, Grandview and Brookwood. 180 staff and volunteers are ready to help out. He says the YMCA wants to be considered the last choice, but they are happy to help if needed. We're worried that if this spreads, that the hospital system will be so overwhelmed that they're going to have a crisis with the bed size and the caretakers. So we're stepping up to try to offer those programs for the caretakers. Right now, organizers are working to figure out when it will be a good time to open the facility to children. In Birmingham, Xavier Harris, WVTM 13. And we just learned moments ago from the YMCA CEO Dan Pyle, the organization will begin daycare for children tomorrow. Well, first responders in Calhoun County are training on how to properly use personal protective equipment during infectious disease conditions. The three weeks of training is for them dealing with a patient that may have COVID-19. There are no active cases right now in Calhoun County. Health officials are warning people, though, about the limited amount of testing available. Um, you know, there's not enough tests for everybody to go around, so it has to be those people that meet the criteria and that have some type of symptoms. Uh, that's the best use of the test so that the community as a whole can get a sense of truly what is going on out there. First responders are also being trained on patient transport should it be needed. Well, there's still no decision at this time if Alabama will hold a runoff election. Right now it's scheduled for two weeks from today. Tommy Tuberville looks to upset former Attorney General Jeff Sessions. The winner takes on Democrat Doug Jones in November. If it's postponed, votes will not be affected because absentee, pa absentee ballots have not gone out. The new social distancing guidelines from the CDC and the White House are also upending the primary election cycle. Voters are still going to the polls in three critical states, Arizona, Illinois and Florida. Voters are wearing gloves and bringing their own pens while some poll workers skip their shifts. Those that did show up say they're prepared. They've been briefed about making sure that the voters, you wipe down the spaces that they're uh, voting in and also the uh, tablet where they sign in. So uh, I think we're in good shape. Well, we still got to vote. We still, life still got to go on. We just got to be safe. The illness postponed Ohio's elections, where the governor says his state is fighting an unprecedented health crisis. Large and small events are impacted, and of course, that includes weddings. WVTM 13's Brittany Decker spoke to a soon-to-be groom who says a lot of their plans are now in limbo before the big day this weekend. Fortunately, with everything that's going on right now, there is a lot of unknowns and um, a lot of these new mandates necessary, I should say, necessary. 
their mandate um, put into play have made it to where we're probably going to do a smaller ceremony on Saturday. We have just uh, very close friends and an immediate family and try and make this day as special as we can for Kennedy and celebrate another time. And that's and that's what's so tricky about all this is um, is making set and some decisions now. Uh, we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what new um, mandates will be put in play, whether it be state, county, federal, um, within the next few days. So. Well, as the spread of the virus continues, more states are now implementing policies to keep people away from large groups, forcing many events like that wedding to possibly be canceled.